This lab is all about the idea of parameter estimation through differential equations. So we'll take a look at that process, what the idea of it is, and how it looks in the code to better help you complete the lab assignment. So this idea ties back to our differential equations with parameter that came up in the previous lab with a different approach to the problem. This is something like our dy dt is some function f sub alpha of t and y. Before we had only autonomous, we'll deal with only autonomous ones here as well, but they could be non-autonomous if the situation merited it. And here is this alpha is a parameter of our problem. In the previous set, we talked about how changing this parameter affects the overall outcome of the solution. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to use physical data to figure out what the value of that parameter is. So there's a parameter in my problem. I don't know what value it is, but I have some physical data. And I want to use that data to tell me what should the value alpha be for this problem. One common example of this could be something with Newton's law of cooling. So that equation is of the form dy dt is some constant k times an external temperature minus y, where y here is the temperature of an object. This makes sense. If y is higher than t0, the object should cool down. If y is colder, it should warm up. And the idea is you generally will know what t0 is. You can measure that. But for a given object geometry physical situation, k is going to vary. So this k here is a parameter that we may not know from the outset. And I'm going to want to use actually running the situation and getting numbers out of it to determine what k is for this situation. Okay, we're going to determine the value of this transfer coefficient from physical data using the fact that the whole setup will solve this differential equation. And it turns out this is how a lot of physical coefficients like this are determined. Things like drag coefficient, heat transfer coefficient, thermal conductivity, population growth constant. A lot of those are just experimentally determined from data and estimated based on a physical situation. Then we can use those coefficients to try to solve more advanced problems using those as our sort of base information that we know. Like drag coefficient, thermal parameters, population constants all really get built from this method. So what's the thought process behind trying to use this differential equation to find the value of these constants from physical data? Overall, this is a very complicated process. However, in some certain simple cases, you can work this out by hand. What does that require? It requires being able to solve the equation analytically and only have one other data point to use to find the coefficient which is fine, but a lot of the situations we want to deal with are more complicated than this. You can't solve it analytically, or you've got a whole bunch of data points you want to find the best constant that works over this range of data, not just a single point. And in that case, you want to use MATLAB or some computational engine to work this out. So what's the process here? How would you do this if you had a little bit of help or doing most of it by hand? Well, you could start by just guessing. So you could guess a value for this coefficient, k, like we used above, and see if the solution matches. You can then adjust k higher or lower based on what's going to make it match better or worse, and eventually sort of a proxy solution from there. If we want to have MATLAB help us more, which is better, I want to find a way to characterize what I mean by if the solution matches. And for this, we're going to want to compute an error, namely an error between the data that we're given and the solution that we get for this value of k. So to fill in this pink part, we're going to compute an error between the data and the solution for our guessed value of k. And then we want to look to minimize this error. Ideally, we want error equals zero, but up to measurement error and stuff, that's not really going to happen. We want to minimize this error to get the best value of k that works best for this situation to give us a good guess at what this coefficient should be. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out what value of k makes the solution fit closest to the given data Therefore, that value of k should ideally be what we have for our parameter to fit this physical model. Let's now look at some of the code and see what that actually looks like. In the code given for lab four, you'll see a lot of these already written for you, but it's the idea of how this is gonna work that's gonna help you sort things out. So here, this drag solution function is just gonna say, if you give it a value of gamma, it'll run the process to figure out the solution t and v as a function of time, right? Pick a gamma, it plugs it in, it solves it out for you. This one here evaluates it at a certain set of t values, which is useful when we're looking at computing our error, which we'll see in the next method. It does the same process, just at a certain set of t values. Now, here is the optimization function. This is the part that's going to do everything we just described. It says, this first line here has you guessing a value of gamma, and it's writing this all as functions, because in MATLAB we can build this all as anonymous functions, and that'll work out easier. So guess a value of gamma, and for that gamma, 
compute the solution to the drag equation at those values, then build the error. And the error here, the commonly used error for these things is a sum of squares. So we're gonna take our test values, which is the solution that we get for our guessed value of gamma, subtract the value given in the data and square that and add them up. This sum of squares gives us an error. Basically it's the sum of squares of how far apart each point that we have from our data is. Right? This is the gap between the solution that we guess and the data. And this gives us a total error among that. So that's guessing a value for K, find the solution, computing the error, and then fmin bound is in the optimization toolbox in MATLAB. And it's gonna take this test error function, this thing right here that basically said, for a value of gamma, find the error between the data and the solution with that gamma, and it's gonna minimize it over the range of zero to one. It is going to take this function of the error and find the location of the minimum value and return that in optimum gamma. So it is going to do the whole process exactly what we wrote out previously, find the solution for a given gamma, compute the error for that gamma, and then minimize the error. And so running this set of code for a given input of t's and v's will give you a value of gamma that corresponds to sort of the best coefficient in this case. It is the value of gamma where the solution curve is closest to the actual data given in the problem statement. As you work through the lab, you'll also see the second part that talks about doing this for a more complicated problem, the harvesting problem. That code is also here. It's the same idea, it's just now more involved because there are now three parameters instead of just one. So it's a f min cons a different function it's called and all this stuff is a little bit different, but the ideas are the same. Find the solution, compute the error, minimize the error. That's the standard process here for trying to do these problems. I'm trying to figure out the best value of the parameter. So I wanna write the error as a function of that parameter and then minimize that function. Now, if you could solve the equation by hand, it would be theoretically possible to write this out as an algebraic expression and then minimize it using calculus. However, it's gonna be really complicated and it's much easier to use MATLAB's minimization technology, as a minimization toolbox to just take the minimum value this way numerically and it'll give you a good enough approximation to the value anyway if you start a future experiments. And the idea of all this is, say you're doing something with a mass on a spring system and you wanna factor in the drag on the object that's at the bottom of this spring. So you could use something like this to figure out the drag coefficient on the object and then take that and put that in your mass on a spring system to make that equation simpler because now you know what these values should be. It's the idea of being able to pick these coefficients lets you make other things simpler because you have that idea and you can now move on to doing other more complicated experiments with this stuff now that you have an idea of what this one coefficient should be in this problem. So that's parameter estimation and that's the basic setup of how you can run it and use it in MATLAB.